All right, so let's continue campifying this. And, you know, we do have this pretty water over here. Why don't we uh, see if we can put it in over this way. Doesn't mean that the ball can't go through it. It could just be a little decoration. Maybe move it down. Let's shrink it up a little bit. There we go. I don't think anyone's going to notice that's the same water. I hope not. Could even flip it upside down. Uh, either way is good. And, uh, you know, we could draw like a little path through here. If this actually was a, and I, I did intend for this to be a, a physics-based object that the ball would uh, would not collide with, uh, what we could do is uh, put one of our uh, special holes over this way. So maybe if the ball goes into here, the uh, this hole moves it someplace else, uh, or it could just... Uh, pop it back out and you could always make it so that the ball can actually go back into the plunger so for example you could have the ball well I don't know if you want to do that but you could have it so the 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 ball goes into here and then it gets shot back into this way well hopefully, hopefully that assumes though that the anytime you launch the plunger the ball does not just go into here otherwise it's just gonna volley back and forth but uh, you know I'd say typically it goes a ramp system and uh, what am I looking for here just the uh, the drop shadow angle on this one I'm gonna flip back around over this way uh, we might uh, might want to draw like a little path through here you know now we're kind of getting into just decoration for you know that's getting drawn onto the table itself so to do that uh, definitely a number of ways we could do this we could just take a really big fat stroke uh, something maybe even a little weightier than that Let's try 35, 37, something. And we'll just uh, take our fun little pen tool. Let's maybe go start over here. So I'm just pressing down and... Uh, Curving it a little bit as I go through. Curve that around the text. It's about to say, can we loop it even all the way over there? Probably not. Probably don't need to. Okay, let's uh, smooth out a little bit of this. And after we do that, we could take the stroke, convert it to a line, and then uh, give it a little bit of texture. I have noticed that uh, Map uh, app is terrific for textures as well. If you, you know, go over a desert or something like that. So yeah, let's uh, let's convert this um, to fills. So just go over here to convert lines to fills, and you can see now you could kind of manipulate it like so. But uh, that'll give us an opportunity to, to mask it. Uh, before we even do that, let's just kind of figure out a nice uh, base color for it. Maybe a kind of a gray, grayish color, something like that. And let's turn it into a symbol. Let's just call this uh, path. And, you know, we could kind of affix little labels to here, put in bear tracks, things like that along the way. Uh, I'm going to put in a couple glows. Let's... Uh, Let's we'll start with an inner glow that uh, just kind of outlines it a bit, darkens it up, and we'll set the strength up a little bit there. Do something like this. Oh, I meant to make that an inner glow, didn't I? And that's probably a bit too much. Let's uh, bring the tone that down. Uh, but then, I guess we could just go ahead and copy our selected filter, paste another one in there, and then this top one, let's take the inner glow off, and then well, we'll spread this out a little bit. Uh, let's try just a white color.
And you know what? I think what we want to do is reverse these. So let's make the black one. Yeah, that's more what I was going for, but not as intense. Just something like this. And once you get that in there, you could even consider uh, playing around with the um, the blending as well. So you kind of get some, you know, maybe that effect over there that doesn't look too bad. Uh, that could even look sort of cool if we did maybe an interior path inside of there. So it kind of looks like it's been edged out. See, a lot of these effects are kind of nice. Hmm. I do like that. Well, let's see what happens when we uh, throw a little texture inside of here and then we can go back and play with it some. So I'm going to uh, double click inside this symbol. I'm just going to uh, put another layer underneath here. And let's find an uh, image to add in as the texture. Okay, I'm going to paste this in, and hey, sure enough, that does look like the desert of somewhere, doesn't it? And uh, then we're going to mask this, so just go over here to mask, and let's take a look at what that looks like. Uh, kind of what I was going for. Let's um, let's play around with the, let's add an adjust color on here, so uh, yet another filter, adjust color, and you get all sorts of cool options, so you could uh, kind of make it a little bit hotter by adjusting the contrast, the... Brightness does something similar. Uh, of course, you could desaturate it as well if you wanted it to look a little bit more rocky as it goes through. And if you just want to change the color altogether, play around with the hue. So it's uh, oftentimes uh, more fine tuned controls than what you get with your uh, color effects over here. And I'm going to get this to kind of what I was looking for. I um, One thing it doesn't do though is affect the alpha and. Uh, was in my mock-up for this. I kind of had it basically what you're looking at um, right here with the alpha sort of down so you could maybe kind of see a little bit through to the table. Almost like uh, it, it was painted on but then you know over time you kind of lost some of it. Um, and I don't want this to really be a um, too intense of a thing because we're gonna we're gonna write stuff around here and you know do other things so just kind of a guide uh, but uh, yeah you know I probably am gonna go back and I just I would like to see one more time what this would look like with um, some of these other filters in here that kind of smooths it out that's almost a nice effect although certainly if you did want to make this something that would glow <laughs> there you go there you got your effect right there hard light is kind of a nice one too and it almost kind of brings out the gravelliness of it. Uh, so you know these uh, the the filters in here are really you can't uh, you can't export them out. So I can't say like export PNG sequence and expect that this filter is going to come into Xcode like this. But um, if when you're exporting out your images, it, this is something that would just be on a bottom layer with everything else. So as long as um, you know you had this over top of your image of, of your you know your your grainy wood over here, uh, when you exported things out, the effect is going to be in place. Okay, so uh, it's kind of a what you see is what you get thing. But um, and we'll have to talk about exporting things out. But uh, most likely anything that is like um, down below, uh, you know, your kind of bottom most layers. Uh, you're going to export out together. So this, this, your wood, um, as long as it's not something that needs to be separated as a physics object. So even the uh, side panels, like so for the, the black along here, this would probably end up getting exported out with the wood texture and everything like that because um, physics wise really all we want is this part right here, right? You know that's going to have its own physics body um, and I don't want the ball to collide necessarily with the black part right because then the ball's only going to go to about there what I do want it to collide with is that green part right so, so it can actually go up over here fall down seemingly onto the you know that thing so uh, that's, that is something to keep in mind and, and it is um, advantageous if you are going to have you know you're going to use some of those blend mode uh, feet, filters and I do like it so uh, let's uh, let's keep that in there for right now and uh, yeah let's litter this up with some bear tracks or something like that 
probably one of the easier things we could draw today. So just grab a circle tool and oh, don't need a stroke around it. Uh, let's uh, make a little footprint, which is just going to have uh, be something like this. Well, that's probably a little bit too small. Let's try 60%. Okay, so we'll call this uh, bear footprint. And let's make it nice and small now, maybe even smaller than that. So you can kind of put these anywhere you want, uh, you know. And again, this is kind of just getting into the <laughs> area of um, well in other projects it might seem unnecessary detail but on a pinball table you can just draw and draw and draw and draw there's no limit to I don't feel like you can clutter it up let's put it that way so yeah maybe do something like this and uh, kind of repeat it somewhere else maybe over here Yes, I don't think anyone that's ever looked at a pinball table that was full of illustrations and said, wow, you really cluttered that up. Okay, I think we're kind of getting somewhere. Well, what do you say we draw a tent right now? We got a little time on our hands, don't we? Got nothing but time. Uh, I'm going to lock up any layer that I'm not going to use. I'm going to zoom in over here. So this would um, essentially be kind of a uh, a tunnel for the ball to go through. It would uh, you brought into Xcode. It would be on a layer above most everything else. And we're going to start with a nice uh, kind of tinty. I said tinty, not tinty. Uh, uh, tent color, <laughs> there we go. And uh, let's set the stroke down to something uh, pretty minimal, maybe four. That is uh, okay. Put that over there. And am I seeing through? I am, aren't I? Oh, that's interesting. That it must have the yep. The alpha is at ninety three percent. Oh gosh, I want to try to maybe keep that in there. I thought maybe this the um the text had burned into my screen. <laughs> Because that kind of does happen now with my Mac. If I leave something in the same place for too long, it'll burn in. Uh, so anyway, yeah, uh, let's 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 try that. And uh, so what I'm going to do is just uh, you know make a kind of triangular tint over top of uh, uh, this part. And I do want to be able to see through to the other side. So I got I, I kind of I can't uh, can't make this too tall over here. I don't think. Well, let's just go ahead and get it in the other shape and we'll figure it out. And in fact, you know what? I don't want that to cut into the text either. Let's move this up just a tad. That might help me out too. So, going back to that um, the Apple uh, Map app. If you can, not every uh, area has that 3D effect, but if you can find one that does, and then you know you get you kind of move it around to the point that uh, it's got the same perspective of your table. You can find some really interesting buildings to trace over, and I was just kind of practicing by doing that uh, recently. I was kind of amazed actually. And there's things that you wouldn't think to do, you know. If, even though I've been illustrating for like what 38 years or something, I uh, I still end up drawing a house almost like this, <laughs> you know. I don't, uh, I don't have an architectural mindset uh, for drawing houses. So to see kind of how you know real buildings are, and uh, you know the shapes that they're made up of, it's uh, it's helpful. That's for sure. Okay, let me. Um, I'm gonna sample maybe this color yellow, and I'll. I'm gonna connect these over here. Uh, obviously, this. Uh, the ball would look weird if it just kind of you know dove through there. So let's arc this up, do something like that, and then the ball could uh, definitely probably fit through that space. And 
Let's uh, let's maybe make it a little bit more tinty. We should probably do some strings or something. I might make this uh, yellow over here a little less hot. In fact, I could start with this yellow and then go over here to the uh, color sampler and then just kind of maybe take it up. This would be, uh, yeah, it's kind of a, yeah, something like that. And once you get your kind of base tint in there, let's make it into a symbol, we'll call it base tint. All right. And uh, then let's, um, you know, we could even, yeah, let's put some lines or poles or something. That maybe seems like it's keeping this tint upright. So I'm gonna work on a layer above what we already just drew. And we could just kind of a, make it seem like these are affixed to the side of the table. Again, this is stuff that was just going to be, you know, on a layer above everything. It doesn't matter. You know, the ball is not going to collide with this or anything like this, uh, like, like that. This wouldn't be a physics-based object anyway. Uh, let's try to put that one over there. And maybe it seems like these guys got a little shadow to them. So let's uh, start there. And then these strokes will take down uh, the alpha. Get something like that happening. I think I changed color there, didn't I? Yeah, that looks better. So there you go. A little something for the ball to roll through. And maybe, you know, like I said, I don't, uh, never a big camper, but uh, I do seem to remember some sort of kind of flaps for the tent. Uh, let me zoom in even further and see if I can get those in there. So let's take that same color stroke, maybe a little less on the stroke height. Grab that color and snap can be really annoying at times. Okay, let's take that off. Gonna do something like this. That's all I'm getting at. One more triangle. I'm gonna copy that shape, uh, flip it around. There we go. So yeah. And it is kind of neat that it's uh, partially see-through. I think. So let's, um, just so I don't uh, have any chance of selecting these by accident, let's uh, put them into a symbol, tent lines, and we'll do the same thing for these guys. Uh, tent flaps. And always a good idea, I think, to kind of, oops, but I, have, ah, I didn't get that one part. That doesn't just fill that in but I think it's always a good idea to uh, kind of combine together your stuff so you know if you did actually if you did delete this by accident uh, you could uh, go back to the library and just find tent hole right so you got all your things back together again and yep feeling it I like it I don't think people really need to read the word pinball it's getting cut off a little bit but uh, they probably get it you know if they're playing a pinball game and hey, you know, if you wanted, you could put all sorts of other things uh, in here. Maybe we should do like a giant bear head or something eating the ball as it goes down through the, the ramp. Okay, so, uh, you know what? I, I realized too, I want to do a, like a little LCD screen down here. And I've kind of not given myself enough space to do that. So I'm going to take these and uh, shrink them down yet one more time. So at least uh, we come back and we could do that in the next video. We'll have a little, little bit more space down there to work with. Okay, here we go. Next video.